Warning, what I'm going to say in this video might discourage you from becoming an actuary, but to me, it's more important that you know these things before you start on your actuarial career path rather than finding out about them six, 12, or maybe even more months into it. Now, most people think that it's the difficulty of the actuarial exams that makes becoming an actuary so difficult. And it's true, the actuarial exams are tough, like really tough. But is that what really makes people want to give up on this career? Personally, I don't think so. So in this video, you're going to learn the three real reasons that I personally believe causes many future actuaries to give up on this dream. That way you can go into this career fully informed on the hurdles that you're most likely going to face so that you can decide if this is what you really want to do. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates so that they can stand out from the competition and get their very first actuarial job. So let's get into this video. Three, two, one. Whoa. Okay, so what makes becoming an actuary so hard? Out of all three of the things that I'm going to talk about today, I think that self-discipline was the hardest for me personally. When you're studying for actuarial exams, it's going to take a lot of time, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. And to fit all that into a schedule that's probably already packed with other things that you like to do, it can be really difficult to have the self-discipline to sit down and study, even though there are other things that you need to get done or other things that you want to do. It does sometimes require some sacrifice of those things that you previously were used to doing. So just like it's hard to stay consistent when you start on a new workout schedule or maybe when you start trying to eat healthy, that can require a lot of self-discipline and studying for actuarial exams is the same way. It's really hard to stick to sometimes. I think that this is probably one of the things that throws off a lot of future actuaries because they just don't realize how much time it's going to take and having the self-discipline to study when you don't want to sometimes, to study when there's other things that you'd rather be doing it can be really difficult it makes studying not feel as fun like I started to hate math after a while studying for actuarial exams even though I previously loved it so it can just start to make it feel more dreadful I would say and for some future actuaries that's why they decide to stop the actuarial career because this part becomes too difficult and it's not what they expected I guess what it really comes down to you here is trying to figure out if becoming an actuary is worth it for you to give up the time that you spent doing other things in your life so if the actuarial career is not worth that for you, then you probably don't want to pursue it. For me at the time when I was pursuing my actuarial goals, it was worth it for me to give up things like maybe playing soccer as many times as I'd want to a week, or maybe spending less time with family and friends. It was worth it to me because I knew the huge reward that would come from getting an actuarial job and pursuing that career path. But it's not worth it for everyone. And you really have to make that decision by yourself. Um, another thing that I would say here is that accountability can be great for this. In the Actuary Accelerator, community we have study groups on whatsapp that really bring people together that are all going for the same goal so for example we have an exam p group it's an accountability group everyone in there is studying for exam p and they're all talking back and forth it creates a lot of motivation and keeps people focused it really helps to have other people surrounding you that are going after the same goals so finding that accountability can be really helpful it's even better if you can find an accountability partner who's going to be checking in with you and making sure that you're actually staying on track with your studying. Okay, so the second thing that makes becoming an actuary so hard is to keep going after you fail. Now, unfortunately, almost everyone that pursues the actuarial career path fails at some point along the way. If you've watched other videos on my channel, you know that I failed probably over 10 times, I would say. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure I failed over 10 times. And it can be really difficult to brush yourself off and keep going. A lot of the time, future actuaries are really used to having a lot of success, especially in school. We often have never failed anything in our life. I had never failed anything in school. Failing exam P was the very first exam I ever failed. So to me, it was like a huge hit to my ego. I was shocked. I didn't really know how to feel because something like this had never happened to me before. And then for it to happen again and again and again and again, I got used to it, but it's still hard every single time to just just get up and keep going. So whether you are pursuing the actuarial career path right now, or maybe it's something you're considering, you're probably going to come across this situation. So I wanna share something that really helped me, and that is to take a planned break after any exam. So yes, whenever I failed an actuarial exam, actually even when I passed an actuarial exam, I would always plan to take a week or two off after that exam before I started studying for the next one. And actually I would take time off from trying to do anything towards my actuarial goal, because I think that 
taking that time to relax, refresh, rejuvenate really helps to rebuild your focus and it helps you to keep going even after those tough times. Having a little distance between the time when you fail and when you start studying again, it really helps you to get over that mental hurdle of not feeling like you did very well, like maybe like you want to give up. So that's my number one advice is to just take a break after failing an exam and you'll probably regain that same motivation that you had previously. Now the other thing that you have to do to combine with this is to figure out where things went wrong and what you're going to do differently next time. If you just go into studying for your exam again with the exact same plan you had the first time, well then the results are most likely going to be the same as they were the first time. So when you go into studying for your second time or third or fourth, whatever it may be, make sure you have a plan of what you're going to do differently. And that will help renew your confidence in your ability to pass this exam. And by the way, I promise you, you can pass this exam. It all comes down to your study strategy and making the time to study properly for the exam. Okay, now the third thing that makes becoming an actuary really difficult is getting your very first entry-level actuarial job. Now, once you get your first actuarial job, it's fairly easy to get your second or third one if you decide to leave the company that you're working for and move to a different company. But getting that very first job is often the hardest and that's because you really have no previous experience in the actuarial field and it can be difficult to prove to employers that you really have the qualifications that they're looking for. When you go to apply for an actuarial job, they're often looking for that bachelor's degree, some exams passed, great communication skills, excellent technical skills, and related experience. And having all of that in one person is a lot. It takes a lot of time to gain all of these qualifications. It can take hours and hours and hours just to study for the exams, but then you've also got to get your bachelor's degree, which takes even more time. You've got to become really good with your technical skills, especially Excel and maybe even a programming language. There is so much time that goes into getting that first actuarial job that it makes it really hard. And unfortunately, this is something that I often see causes people to give up on their actuarial dream because they've spent so much time getting qualifications that they think are going to help them get an actuarial job. They start applying for actuarial jobs, but since there's so many other people applying, they often feel like they're not going to stand out or they don't get any responses to their resume. And because of that, they just don't know what to do and they end up giving up. Sometimes I see people have applied to hundreds and hundreds of actuarial jobs with no prospects, no job opportunities, maybe no interviews. It happens because getting an actuarial job is tough. Now, if you have watched this channel for a while now, you've probably know my advice to become a top candidate. And if you do become a top actuarial candidate, it's going to drastically increase your chances of getting that first actuarial job. But the thing is becoming a top candidate still isn't easy. So that's why I say getting that first job is one of the hardest parts of becoming an actuary. And by the way, if you do want to know more about the top candidate method, then make sure you go watch this video next because it's going to explain that in detail so you know exactly what to do if you want to become a top candidate, make it as easy as possible to get an actuarial job. Okay, so those are the three hardest things about becoming an actuary in my personal experience. If this was helpful for you, please give this video a thumbs up and if you have any questions about this, make sure to comment down below. I will be responding to every single comment down there. And that's all for this week. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.